Hello and uh, welcome to this month's CA PPM Community Webcast, How to Modernize the PMO with Agile. Today, James Chen is going to join us to talk about the benefits of adding an Agile management tool to your PPM system, like CA Agile Central, for example. And as PMOs like yourself are facing greater pressure to deliver all your projects on time, under budget, uh, James has been with us here at CA for almost five years as the director of pre-sales. We'll explain how the solutions work, both alone and together, and how they can give you that end-to-end -end view of all your projects. James, please enlighten us about our Agile as well as the PPM. Excellent. Thank you, Al. And uh, thank you so much for the uh, setup here. So, I feel like I'm under a little bit of pressure, so uh, hopefully I'll do a good job. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is James Chan, and um, I am the uh, Director of Technical Sales for CAPPM. And uh, I work in the Agile Management Business Unit, but again, I'm, my main focus is on PPM. Just a little bit about me, um, I've been in this space for about 25 years. And throughout my career, I really had one foot in the PMO space and the other in AppDev. And my job was really about connecting what the business needed with how developers wanted to work. So I had opportunities to kind of build and run PMOs as well as lead agile transformations in the AppDev space. So for our conversation today, I thought to start off with a little story. And um, as Al mentioned, I've been here at CA for about five years. But prior to that, I was working at a global software organization, and we really created software for the advertising industry. And what our software did was that it allowed ad agencies to really take their clients' ad dollars and really plan, place, run, and track how those ads performed. And we basically delved in traditional media, right? So, you know, local TV, network TV, broadcast, cable, and print. But digital came around. And what we needed to do was kind of create a new platform to support digital ads. So because it was brand new to us, brand new to the industry, there was a lot of uh, unknown, hence a high level of risk. So one of the things we did was we said, you know what? From a development perspective, we're going to try Agile. So we went through this huge Agile transformation. and. Uh, we're pretty proud of what we actually accomplished by the Agile transformation. So one of the things we did, right, was we invited the president of digital to our end of sprint demonstrations. And we said, you know what, this is going to be a great opportunity to kind of show off to him, you know, how we're developing and executing work in an Agile manner. So the president comes in, you know, he sits down, sits actually to my left, and first team comes up, right? And the first team talks about what their velocity target was and, you know, how many stories they delivered and went ahead and began to, you know, demo their stories. Team two, they came up and they talked about things like, well, you know, our burn down was great for the first three days of the sprint, but then we ran into challenges and we had to perform these technology spikes and we weren't able to meet our velocity target. And next team went, next team went. And after about three to four teams, the uh, president of digital looked over at him, and he had this look on his face, right? He looked a little confused. And when our eyes met, he actually leaned over and he says, James, I love the engagement. I love the excitement of the teams, but you got to help me out here. I don't know what this velocity thing means. You know, when we talk about these spikes, you know, the spikes that I'm familiar with are things on the bottom of my golf shoe. And I'm not sure how this information around stories, is it, is it a fable? Like, what are these stories? And really, how do these things add up, you know, into having a platform that integrates with Google Analytics by the third quarter? Because that's what I really want to know. And it was interesting. At that point, it kind of hit me that he didn't really know how to translate Agile metrics into business speak. Um, and he also didn't have a good idea of how all the small stories that each of the different teams were kind of talking about, how to add it up to a whole in terms of business value. Because at the end, he really just wanted to see, well, how does 
how are we going to meet that goal of integrating with Google Analytics? And he wasn't so, so much concerned about the individual details. And what he really wanted to understand was three basic things, right? So again, he was very supportive of what teams were doing from an agile transformation perspective. But at the end of the day, he was concerned about three things. First was investments, right? So what did, what did he invest in, right? He, he gave us money and people to go ahead and build this digital platform. And one of the things we were on the hook for was integration with Google Analytics. So where are we with that, right? What are the teams delivering? Are we going to deliver on time? Are we going to deliver within the budget that he originally intended? And finally, outcomes, right? Are we going to hit that, hit that target to kind of achieve the outcomes that was anticipated? So what I thought we would do today is really just have that conversation to talk about, right, um, how do we take all the awesome things that our Agile team is doing and really connect it back to the business in a meaningful way. And really, what I thought we'd kind of do is really take it from two different perspectives. The first is I thought it would be a good baseline for us to really talk about, well, what is the focus of PPM? And then we'll talk a little bit about what the focus of Agile platforms are. And, you know, I took a look at the list of folks that are, you know, on the call today. And, you know, because I saw the registration list. And I know a lot of us are very familiar with PPM. So then what I thought might be beneficial for our conversation today is really get into the nuts and bolts, right? I'm going to actually talk through the concepts of how to connect. And then I'm going to show you how to connect to the platforms. Then we're going to talk about the, the artifacts that actually come back and forth between PPM and the Agile platform. We're going to talk about time management and what we've kind of done there. And finally, dashboard and reporting. So that being said, you know, one of the things that we're going to leverage today is from the PPM side, of course, we're going to leverage PPM. And then from the Agile platform side, we're going to leverage Agile Central because that is our platform of choice. But know that a lot of these concepts can be applied to others as well. Okay, so let's talk about the lens of PPM um, first, right? Because I think that will kind of uh, give us a good perspective as to what PPM does, right? From just a business perspective. So for me, when I think about the job that PPM needs to perform, I really look at it from two perspectives. The first perspective is really the ability to perform investment level planning. And when I talk about investment level planning, I'm really talking about capturing enterprise demand, deciding on the right things to invest in, as well as understanding the, um, our organization's capability or ability to perform that work, right? And that might include functions like annual and perpetual portfolio planning, you know, including financial decisions, right? Including really understanding what the game changes are that the business wants to invest in, as well as making sure that the organization is staffed to be able to move those game changes forward. And the second area is really focused around outcome realization and measurement. And what I mean by that is that it's great that we can make an investment, it's great that we can track work, but did the work deliver have the impact that we thought it would, as well as, you know, have market conditions changed and do we need to pivot on our strategies strategy to really meet our goals and objectives. Now, once that kind of is set up, right, once we have this enterprise plan and framework and a good idea of the outcomes that we want and understand which investments are our best bets to kind of get us there, as well as what we're willing to commit from a financial as well as a person perspective, then we can actually give very clear direction uh, to the teams so that they can help figure out how to get there. Now, from an Agile perspective, once the teams kind of understand, yes, this is where we want to end up, they can take those funded initiatives and break them down into business deliverables. And usually this is in the form of a feature. And what this does is it begins to create this strong bond between the business and the delivery team so that the business has a clear understanding of the what and when the, and when the teams will deliver. And and I was kind of thinking about, you know, that translation story, right? And what I think here is that we want to be able to have this link between the business and development where the business gets a sense of direction 
and communicate to the teams in the form of an initiative, right? So this is what I've funded. This is, you know, the teams that you get. This is what I need you to focus on. And then the teams use features really as that bridge to help the business understand the what they are delivering overall. Okay, so that's, that's really the baseline in terms of setting the context of the integration. So what I thought we would now do is kind of get into really the, the meat of our conversation as well as the demonstration around connecting the two platforms. One of the first things that I did want to mention is that the PPM and Agile Central platform is really quite robust. One of the key things here that you want to uh, take away is that in Agile Central, um, you can have a concept of a workspace. And a workspace is really, you know, based on organization. You might have different business units that want to actually roll data off differently, right? So one of the cool things about the integration is that we have this integration control table. And what that allows you to do is that it allows you to set up multiple types of integrations to different workspaces within Agile Central. So you have the flexibility to allow your Agile teams to organize how they want to organize, but then have that centralized back into uh, CAPPM. So that being said, I thought what we can do now is actually go into the system and actually show you how to actually connect the two platforms. So it's actually quite simple. What I've kind of done, you're looking at CAPPM 15.2, and I just kind of created a but to kind of help guide our conversation today. So basically, you know, with the right administrative rights, you can actually begin setting up the integration. Now, again, remember I mentioned that you can have multiple integration instances, and here's an example of several that I've already set up. So instead of watching me type, I'm actually going to walk through one that's already set up to kind of give you an idea of, you know, what needs to be filled in and what fields, right? So again, integration name, uh, pretty freeform field. You can uh, put whatever you want there. In this case, I put in Agile Central to PPM. Uh, the type of integration, who the vendor is, and who the supplier is implementing the integration. Now, there's a couple of key things here that you're going to want to be aware of when you're actually integrating two platforms. First, you want to understand and put in here what the URL is of your Rally servers. So, for example, here, I'm going to switch over to an instance of Agile Central. And here, you can grab that information from the first part here. This is the first part of the URL. And this actually designates what instance you're on. So that's what you want to put in here. Now, by default, also, remember I talked about that you can actually integrate to one or multiple workspaces. So here's where you would put in that workspace ID. So I often get asked, well, where do I find that workspace ID? It's actually quite simple. So if you're in Agile Central, um, you can just click on, this looks like a wrench and a hammer. And that's actually going to bring you to your workspace area here. And just click on your workspace. And you see these numbers at the bot back of that slash was this workspace. You're just going to copy that. And you're just going to paste it into your integration instance. And that's your workspace. Now, from an authentication perspective, you're going to have to find your API key. And again, the question is, well, how do I do that? Again, we make it super easy. All you have to do is, again, go into your Agile Central instance. And what you're going to do is, at the end of your Rally instance, you're going to type in login. And then you're going to click on API keys. And you're going to copy your API key from this field here. And you're going to put it in here. So now I've began syncing the two platforms, right? I've designated PPM and what my target Agile Central instance, right, as well as workspaces and how to actually um, gain access by security. So once I've kind of done that, what I then want to be able to do is begin to kind of define where I want the synchronization to occur. Now, one of the key things that, you'll, um, that we understand with the Agile Central as well is that you can set up your hierarchy of portfolio items, right? So basically here you can have different portfolio items that the initiative, theme, feature level as an example. And of course, you can actually configure that 
um, as well. So what we kind of recommend out of the box is that a PPM project is going to link to an initiative, which is one of your top tiers here, and then the features actually come back from that central. So again, very simple. I just say, well, what I want a PPM project to map to. In this case, I want to map it to an initiative. And then what do I want a feature to map? Or what do I want a feature to map back into PPM as a task? Now, of course, I can actually also say, well, I want to create and sync the team as well as create and sync the tasks, right? And again, you know, we're going to say in this case, we're going to have the direction go from Agile Central into PPM. Now, the reason why I point that out is as a 15.2, we also have the capability to send features from PPM into Agile Central. And we'll go over that in a little bit um, during our call later. And of course, you know, you can actually set some defaults here in terms of what are these features that are coming into PPM, are available for time entry. If they are, um, what's the default cost type as, as well as charge code? Now, the other cool thing that we did in 15.2 is that we've actually added the capability to create a time tracking project template. And again, we're going to go into more detail when we review the time, time module a little later on, but I wanted to kind of point that out here during the integration piece or the setup piece is where you can actually set up all those different um, possibilities. Okay. Okay. So again, setting up the integration, super simple, right? So let's talk a little bit now, now that I have the two platforms set up to integrate, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the artifacts that kind of come over. As I mentioned before, as you already know, within PPM, you can have a hierarchy of, of different investment objects, right? From, you know, product, application, services, to programs, or projects, and tasks. You have something similar on the Agile Central side as well. Um, by default, how the box is structure is themes, initiative, features, and of course, in Agile Central, you can also configure how that works. Now, one of the key things that we do is, again, remember I just showed you those two mapping levels? Well, what you can then do is say, okay, a project then becomes an initiative, as well as a feature then becomes a PPM task. And again, you have flexibility in terms of what levels you want to map at from a portfolio item perspective. You just need to define that integration. And of course, as of 15.2, which was just released, um, we also allow you to go the other way from task into feature from PPM to Agile Central. Now, I often also get asked as well, what are the attributes that come over from Agile Central back into PPM around the feature itself, right? So here's a list of the different attributes from Agile State to estimates to dates to percent complete, um, you know, user story, number of user stories, user stories accepted. So we give you a lot of information out of the box. In 15.2, We've also added three more fields around investment category, release, and milestone as well, okay? And as a 15.2, like I mentioned before, we've just given you the ability to go from a PPM task into a Agile central feature. So let's actually talk a little bit about how that flow works, and we'll kind of show you uh, in the system as well. So. As you know, within PPM, like we talked about before from a business perspective, you can set up a portfolio of possible investments, right? So here, I'm sure everyone's familiar with that waterline view there. And once you've kind of said, yes, from a business perspective, these are the investments that I'm willing to make a financial as well as a person commitment to to help me achieve my outcomes, I can then decide how I want to execute that work. Once I say yes, I want to execute in a Agile manner, that project now can become an initiative on the Agile Central side. So let's actually take a look at how this integration works overall. Okay, so let's take a look at setting up the project. So I've actually set up the configuration so that the two platforms are synced. Now within the project itself, I can go ahead and say, yes, I want to be able to use Agile Central um, to do a synchronization. So within the project itself, we make it super simple. So you just want to say you want to synchronize, and this is the instance 
of that synchronization that you want. Remember, we had the capability to set up multiple of these types of integrations? Well, this is the one I've kind of chosen. Now, once that happens, um, there's a couple of things, right? So to create the initiative on the Agile Central side, what you would do here is there's a process that runs, in, runs on demand or in the background. So if I want to run it manually, I can just create an action item and just go Agile Central Sync. At that point in time, it actually goes ahead and actually creates the initiative on the Agile Central side. Once that initiative is then created, right, um, at that point in time, the teams can then break out those work into those features. So remember, earlier on we talked about that you can integrate at two different levels, right? So the first level was a PPM project to an Agile Central initiative. In this case, it's the personalized online shopping experience. When the teams begin to break down the work, they're going to create these features. These are the features that come back into CAPPM. Now, of course, the teams can break down things into stories and tasks and so forth, but from a business deliverable perspective, what we found works best is really bringing in those features, kind of like that story I told everyone at the beginning of our conversation today where, you know, the president of digital didn't really have good context when people were talking down here. But when folks were talking really at a feature from a business deliverable perspective, they really kind of understood from a business perspective what was being delivered. Okay, so once that happens, work gets synced, and then those features come back into CAPPM. And what happens here is that we bring back those features. So those features belong inside CAPPM here as well. Now, the cool thing is, remember, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, time. So these features kind of coming over uh, can be open for time. And one of the things that, you know, we found out as well is that a lot of uh, organizations that are keeping time want to look at things really from an activity-based accounting perspective. So here, remember when we actually added that template to that integration? So when the integration ran, it was smart enough to know that these features came over from Agile Central, and then by default, it added all these different types of tasks so that as folks keep time, they can actually talk about what activity they perform for that specific feature. And again, that's going to help feed into some capitalization efforts as well as overall um, what are we spending our time on efforts as well, okay? Now, once that information is kind of brought over into CAPPM from a um, statusing perspective, here you can actually see the percent done by plan estimate, percent done by the story count, the number of points out there, as well as accepted stories. Now, just know that even though we're bringing everything over from a feature level, we're going to take all those different things inside Agile Central. So we're going to take all these different stories and we're going to roll it up and aggregate it back at the feature level so that you have visibility from, from that perspective, okay? And then, of course, you know, we also allow you to kind of see everything at an aggregate level as well. So from here, when we talk about those different fields that come in, they can be displayed here, um, as well as these fields, because they are part of PPM now, you can actually take these fields, put them on reports, you can take these fields and put them in portlets, and I want to show you some examples as well as some of the visualizations a little later on during the conversation. Okay. So, again, running the sync, very simple. Uh, setting up the sync, very simple, as well as the types of data that go back and forth, pretty simple. Now, in this case, what I kind of just showed everyone was the ability to kind of say, okay, I have a PPM project, and it went over to a – um, Agile Central initiative, and then the features were created in Agile Central and they became tasks into CAPPM. Now, one of the things we did in 15.2, some of our clients said, hey, that's great, but we want something a little different. What we wanted to be able to do is say, I want a project created into CAPPM, have an Agile Central initiative created, and then 
I want another task created under a PPM project and have that task create a feature in Agile Central. So we're happy to say that in 15.2, you now have that capability. So we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through how that's actually set up. So in this case here, I have another uh, PPM project that's integrated. And in this case, what I've said is I wanna synchronize with Agile Central, but in this case, I, you, I'm using a different instance where the direction now is saying instead of Agile Central into PPM for features, I'm gonna say the direction is really PPM into Agile Central for features overall. Okay, and again, you know, same fields, right? So same types of, you know, information gets captured, but there is a little difference, right? So the difference here is that in order to get a um, PPM task into an Agile Central feature, all you have to do is there's an additional field now called sync. And all you have to do is turn that field on, right? So there's two options, yes or no. If the option says yes, then that PPM task will now become a feature on the Agile Central side. So then that way, when you go ahead and um, run your sync, that then creates a feature on the Agile Central side. And of course, you know, um, one of the things that I forgot to mention, but I think most people in the phone may know this, is that of course I can create an action item or this job can be scheduled to automatically synchronize across the board, across multiple PPM projects. But in this case, what we did was we said, okay, great. This is the new initiative that got created from PPM. And these are the features that also get driven from PPM as well. So now we allow that bi-directional type of functionality from a synchronization perspective. And that's available as of 15.2, okay. So, so the synchronization in terms of the artifacts, pretty simple, pretty cool, uh, pretty easy to do as well. And again, what gets me so excited, right, is that a lot of times when I talk to clients, they're like, that's, you know, great, we have all this information inside the Agile system, but I really want it tied back together inside PPM. And because you have all these fields available to you, you can do that now. You can put it on a report, um, in portlets, you know, you can use Jasper as other, as well as other third-party vis visualization tools as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about time. Okay, so, you know, one of the things that I just want to quickly revisit is time management and why is it so important, right? So from a time management perspective, you know, it's gonna give you insight from a budget and cost management perspective. Um, and ability to kind of track, you know, how much money you've spent, how much you have remaining in plan overall. But the other thing that's really interesting to me is the second bullet, evidence of poor behavior. And uh, the reason why it stuck with me is that as we're out there, right, you know, we're, we're talking about, especially in the Agile world, these dedicated teams, right? These are the teams that are dedicated and that's their only primary focus for the next two to three weeks in terms of their sprint and all they're working on are, are the stories assigned to them, right? Or if you're thinking of the longer picture from a um, program increment, right, every quarter, these are the features they're gonna focus on and that's all they're gonna be working on. But it's interesting, in talking to many of you out there, um, I find that it's almost like this golden unicorn where we, we have this dedicated teams, but in reality, what's happening to a lot of these teams is that they're getting pulled off, right? There's a fire somewhere, there's an emergency somewhere. Maybe they're the only ones that can actually understand how to support a legacy system, right? And by keeping time, it gives the organization visibility into, you know, uh, evidence of poor behavior or if the organization is suffering from the tyranny of now, meaning that, hey, I want to do this, but now you got to get pulled off to do something else. So it gives them visibility into that, which also leads to early indicators as to whether or not they're gonna be able to make their commitments around delivering the features that they want. And of course, you know, justification of headcount. Um, and again, if we have evidence of, you know, poor behavior, people being pulled away, that might be a good way to justify some additional headcount to get work done. And of course, you know, again, in talking to many of you, there's, um, 
a lot of you know, out there that are using subcontractors, right? So that's an easy way to kind of do positive pay as well as some software capitalization. So again, you know, time management is still a very important piece from an enterprise perspective to have enterprise visibility. And again, you know, with time itself, it's that common currency I think that most enterprises use. So what do we do in terms of time, right? So one of the key things that we said was we wanted to make timekeeping, right, or time tracking very simple. So the reason what we found was, we, first of all, we said we want to make it um, minimally invasive, right? That way it, doesn't, it shouldn't take a person more than 30 seconds to go ahead and fill out that, that timesheet. So one of the key things we said we need to figure out first was, well, where does it make sense to keep time? At what level, right? Because remember, I have things at the initiative, I have things that features, stories and tasks and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that we landed on, we said, okay, A, what is usually the capitalizable asset that most organizations are looking at? And B, what does it actually make sense, right? Does it make sense at the task level where, you know, that developer might have, you know, hundreds of tasks? Does it make sense at the story level where the development team might have 50 or more plus stories? Or does it really make sense more at the feature level, which is the business delivery, right? So one of the key things that we landed on was that, you know, when you're keeping time, we really kind of landed at that feature level. And, and that's what we kind of bring out of the box. So let's actually kind of walk you through a little bit in terms of how we actually uh, keep time there. So again, one of the things that we did was, you know, especially if you are leveraging Agile Central as your Agile platform, what we wanted to do was keep the developer as they're keeping time within the context of their own work environment. So what we've kind of done is we've kind of embedded the TPM timesheet all inside Agile Central. So as you can see, I'm sitting here inside Agile Central and I'm just gonna try to open up my PPM timesheet. And here it is. Um, now, this is the same PPM timesheet that you would actually see in PPM. It's just that it's embedded within Agile Central. And a lot of folks ask me, it's kind of like, wait, 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 time out, James. Agile Central has timekeeping capabilities. Like, why can't you just sync that? So one of the key things that um, I kind of talk through is the fact that there's a difference between timekeeping capabilities versus a time module. Timekeeping capabilities allow you to go ahead and track time, change time, but there aren't any controls over that, right? So that means I can go back and change time anytime I want. Um, there's no concepts of open or closed periods, right? Whether they're fiscal or calendar. And the cool thing about time modules is that there's discipline involved in that, right? You can open and close periods, you can do adjustments, um, so that from a financial perspective, you're made whole as well as the ability if your organization tracks or wants to track other time outside of development work, our time module um, from PPM allows you to go ahead and do that. So again, we make it super easy, right? So in here, and I'm sure many of you have seen the demonstration around our new time, time module capabilities, so I'm not gonna spend too much time around feature functionality, but one of the cool things here is that I can go ahead and create a new timesheet. I can copy it from previous uh, periods as well as have it um, auto-populate for me in terms of the tasks that I've been assigned. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And in this case here, what it's done is it kind of knows that these are the three projects that I'm kind of work on. And remember that template we had before that agile central timekeeping template to the synchronization and it created all these different activity base subtasks by feature, now they appear for me, right? So here I can say, okay, I spend time working on development for the specific feature, for the specific initiative. Um, as well as, you know, I kind of worked on this other feature for development. And again, very super simple to go ahead and put time against it and it automatically adds it. So again, one of the things we wanted to do was really, you know, have the team members 
provide value back to the organization by providing that time visibility, but again, make it super simple for people so it's just not arduous to kind of do as well. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about dashboarding and reporting, right? So now that we have cool ways to kind of capture information, um, how do we, what kind of visualizations are available? Okay. So a couple of things. So this is an example of, of a dashboard uh, we kind of pulled together. And again, you know, this is just a portlet, right? And here you can actually see by this project, the number of percent done based on story points. You can have subjective status as well as the number of accepted features. And on a feature by feature basis, you can actually have a good view of what's going on. Now, what's really exciting for me is you know how when we talk about uh, concept to cash, right? You know, delivering things of value. And I think what makes our integration here so valuable is that it doesn't just stop at development complete. Now, as part of the integration in terms of visibility, you can actually take a look at the feature, take a look at what milestone is trying to have, as well as features, as well as what the agile state is, right? Is it still in development or is it actually in production? So now we actually have this full connection, right, of a piece of work being conceived to actually being worked on, to actually being moved into production. And for me, that's pretty powerful now because now I can say not only are we done with the work, but it's actually in production working, right? So um, for me, that's a great thing. And again, because you have all this information inside PPM, you can easily create these types of portlets as well. The other thing is, you know, as of 15.2, uh, we've also included a capability like these roadmaps, right? So for example, you can actually begin associating different initiatives at a higher level, maybe to a product, right? And then from there, you can actually take a look at what are the projects as well as the features and, and as well as what their delivery is overall. And you also have this capability now to kind of go ahead and configure your GAN view or change your GAN view there to really understand based on uh, time sensitivity whether something should be red, yellow, or green, right? meaning that, hey, I have X amount of work left, I have X amount of time left. Do I have more work than time? Then yeah, then maybe I should change some of these on this roadmap here to let the team know that, hey, we might be in trouble at a, at a macro level. In addition, um, we also have this capability of this new report. And what's cool about this is that it's really like a roadmap view. Um, and here you can actually see um, based off, of course, you can group by OBS, group by product, app, but here you can actually see all the different projects and you can actually see all the different features um, that are being overlaid or being prepared um, for that project overall. So this is one of our new roadmap views that have been um, released in 15.2 that you can take advantage of. And what's cool here too is that you can actually set it up um, to combine Agile-based projects as well as, you know, non-Agile-based projects to kind of really see uh, key delivery or key milestones overall. And then finally, if you're using, um, you know, maybe some third-party visualization, right? So, for example, here, um, you can now take a look at the different projects um, and being able to have that business lens of what's going on, right? So, you've committed uh, 18 members but only two have actually been working on the project to date. Again, we're gonna be able to understand this from really the timekeeping capability. And again, this may be a sign of bad behavior. This may be a sign of, hey, that dedicated team is not really dedicated and they're being pulled off to do some firefighting. Uh, from a financial perspective, here you can actually take a look at what your planned spend is, as well as what your overall burn rate is, in terms of where you are, in terms of overall end date as well. And here on a feature-by-feature -feature basis, you can really have a clear understanding of where the team stands in overall delivery. And then finally, here's another visualization. Now, remember I mentioned that um, a couple of new fields are being pulled over from uh, in version 15.2, like um, investment category. 
So here what you can begin doing is really looking at your overall information and data and begin aggregating it up. For example, I might take a look at, let's say, the summer release. That's great. Well, this is a pretty big release train. Again, I might have some bad behavior in here because only 75% of my team members that were committed are actually working. I can look at my overall budget. I can look at how complete I am with that release, as well as what is the average cycle time from feature inception to feature completion, which is a pretty interesting metric, right? Because then I can understand, well, as new features are kind of being streamed and worked on, well, how long does it usually take for features to actually get into production? And then here, I can take a look at, for that release, where am I spending my dollars? What types of things am I bringing to market, right? It's great to know that I'm bringing all these types of features, but guess what? You know, I'm spending about 50, 60, let's, let's round it up. Let's say 60% of this release on things are categorized as maintenance-based features. Strategic, I'm only spending about 25 and 20% 20 of short-term growth. So it gives me a good idea or a high-level spend profile of, of what this release looks like. And again, you know, this is a sample visualization um, that you could do, again, because all this data is actually absorbed inside the data warehouse. And of course here, in terms of the details and specifics, you know, I can configure this to kind of say, okay, these are the fields I want in this case here. Everything's in development except this one feature, which is in GA. So again, these are just some samples of things you can actually do. But for me, what's so cool about this, again, back to that story, right? If I had this type of view when I was talking to the president of digital at my old job, um, I might still have a job there. I'm just joking. Um, but um, if I had this, this actually puts everything in a good business context for him, right? Because, again, he can understand, well, what is my investment? What did I commit to, right? These are the people, the number of people I committed to this effort. These are the dollars I was willing to commit. But where am I, right? What's the progress? Where am I overall? What's been kind of delivered overall? As well as how long things take and what my overall spending category is. So this really gives you that business lens into what's going on from the Agile execution teams overall. Okay. So that being said, um, I also wanted to point out that, oh, sorry, this is an old slide here, but 15.2, which was just released, um, you can find documentation on all the stuff that I talked about in terms of integration up on the doc op site. And I apologize, this should have been a 15.2 slide. But that being said, the information has been updated on the doc op site. So I encourage everyone to go ahead and uh, take a look at all the documentation up there. So, so now I think I'm going to open it up. Alf, do we, do we have any uh, questions on the line? Um, or is everyone kind of following us? Yeah. No, uh, it's been quite active, actually. Thank you very much, James. It was a great overview. I like the details that you took us in, so I appreciate that. And and, and during those uh, demo sessions, there was a lot of questions coming in, especially around integration, so I will take you through a couple of them. Um, for the, what's the plan that we uh, on the roadmap right now for having Agile Central's user stories and tasks mapped into PPM? Yeah, I think a lot, lot of folks have, have asked for that. And I think our perspective is, is really from a business perspective, um, you, you may, you know, what our perspective is from a business perspective, the feature is, is really the artifact that's going to come over from CAPPM. And the stories and tasks themselves really are artifacts that belong to the development team sitting in Agile Central. Because one of the things that we kind of discovered, right, especially with user stories and tasks, they're actually very transient. And what I mean by that is they can change sprint over sprint, and even tasks day over day. So the question is, if I'm in PPM and I'm managing the business investment, I may not want to get to that level. Why? <coughs> because, <coughs> excuse me, that might lead to some uh, false positives as well as some false fire drills as well. So. Um, right now, it's, I think some clients have asked, and um, we're working with product management to kind of see, well, what's the viability? But right now, the, the perspective is the 
feature is really the business artifact that we're going to uh, bring over from Magic Central. In that vein, uh, and this is more on automation, I guess, if you, can you create an initiative in Agile Central and have that create automatically a, a, a project in, in CAPT? Yeah. So, so from a mechanics perspective, you can absolutely have a Agile Central initiative and then create the link back into a PPM project. Yes, but one, one thing wouldn't, wouldn't find out but you could connect it to separately. You can connect it to, yes, yes. Uh, and then what would you do if you wanted to support both directions for the same project? Um, talk a little bit about how, the, how directions between integration can work and how they can be set up in general. Yeah, yeah, so, so I think one of the awesome things that we've kind of done in 15.2 uh, is we allow um, directional settings, right? Uh, whether it's from PPM into Agile Central or Agile Central into PPM. So, you know, where you kind of set up that integration initially, um, you have the capability there to define what direction that integration is going to go to. So, for instance, let's actually, I'm a visual guy, so I'm just going to go back into the system now and we can take a look, right? That's great. So, yeah. So, from here, you can actually have a direction. Agile Central into PPM, and with this, the Agile Central features come back into uh, PPM. Now, with the other direction, PPM into Agile Central, you'll notice that the direction is different, PPM to Agile Central, and that means PPM tasks can now become Agile Central features. Now, to address the question directly, is because we allow you to have different integration instances set up, depending on which direction, what workspace, what instance of Agile Central you want to link to, you can actually have multiple of these set up, and that's how I, I would do it myself to be able to address that. So you have a lot of versatility. Now, the only thing I would caution, and I was waiting for this entire session to be able to use this one phrase, right? Spider-Man fan, right? With great responsibility, where great power comes great responsibility. So what I encourage organizations to do, right, is to really sit down and think through from a business perspective, what are the things that are going to make sense and what the flow of work is? How does work flow to the team? Um, and based on that, I think that's going to help decision or help with the decision in terms of what direction things kind of flow uh, in and out of. Great. Um, then they, the, the, the question is switching a little bit more over to the time management aspect. Um, and yeah. um, can you still see the classic um, timesheet in Agile Central? Or does this, um, are you, you choose one? Yeah, so, so, so what you'll be able to see is the um, new time module inside Agile Central. Um, Okay. And, and the reason why we, we did that is because, just in my opinion, and I've been using uh, Clarity or PPM since version 7, this version is so much mm. better. I mean, I yeah. have ease of use. I have these carousels. I have the ability to do notes. And, and even, the, even the way it looks, right, it, it's more appealing. And, and literally, it, it takes someone less than 30 seconds to go fill out a timesheet. So we said, you know, we built this awesome new way for people to kind of work in terms of time management. Mm. Um, mm. We want to be able to have people take advantage of that and, and really have a good time with timekeeping. And that's a funny thing. And do you then have to have timekeeping? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then there was a follow-up question on that. Does it mean that the new UI has to be active in PPM to allow the sheet, the time sheet in Agile Central? Yeah. So so the, the, yes. Yeah. So you you have to be um, on on the, the latest versions of PPM, and you just have to enable uh, the new time module of visualization. Yep. Cool. I'll take one more, and that's around the reports. Um, there are more questions out there. We'll try to address those with you as we go forward. But um, 
these dashboards that you were showing are very nice and people are wondering, are they real? Is this what you get with the product or is this that you tucked up in your garage to, to impress us? Yeah, so um, some of the stuff, um, so for example, like these uh, PPM to AC dashboards, right? So this is stuff um, that can be configured, right? Um, mm -hmm. But the stuff that comes out of the box are like our product roadmaps, right? So this is new product roadmap, as well as this enterprise roadmap view here in terms of this report here. That comes with 15.2. Um, mm -hmm. And that's available for general use. But everything else I showed you um, is really just configurations um, in terms of how we actually leverage the data. And, and for me, right, the, the cool thing about this is the visualizations are cool, but the cooler thing is that it's part of the warehouse. And because it's part of the warehouse, mm -hmm. I have such flexibility in terms of how I want to surface the data that's meaningful for my business. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. Uh, thank you so much, James. Uh, we will send out a link of this recording to all of you. You can uh, watch it again. You can share with your team and share, uh, send it out to your colleagues. I appreciate all of you coming today and listen. Thank you, James, for doing such a good job taking us through this. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach us in communities. Please post your questions or uh, come to Twitter at CAPPM. Uh, we'll take questions here as well. With that, we conclude today's event. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody.